St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to the celebration of this Eucharist. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from two donors. The first are Mr. and Mrs. Norm Lebert from Cloyne, from Cloyne, Ontario. This Mass is being offered for the deceased members of the Lebert and Eager Gang families. The second is an anonymous donor from Edmonton, Alberta, for the sick and the dying. Our thanks go out to the donors of this Mass. Today, as we celebrate the Feast of St. Ambrose, we ask this great saint, who loved the Lord so much and spoke so eloquently about Christ and the Kingdom, to help us to enter into this Eucharistic celebration. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ of mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who made the Bishop St. Ambrose a teacher of the Catholic faith and a model of apostolic courage, raise up in your church men and women after your own heart to govern her with courage and wisdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God says this, shall not Lebanon in a very little while become a fruitful field and the fruitful field be regarded as a forest? On that day, the deaf shall hear the words of a scroll and out of their gloom and darkness, the eyes of the blind shall see. The meek shall obtain fresh joy in the Lord, and the neediest people shall exalt in the Holy One of Israel. For the tyrant shall be no more, and the scoffer shall cease to be. All those alert to do evil shall be cut off. Those who cause a person to lose a lawsuit, who set a trap for the arbiter in the gate, and without grounds deny justice to the one in the right. Therefore, thus says the Lord who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob, no longer shall Jacob be ashamed. No longer shall his face grow pale. For when he sees his children, the work of my hands in his midst, they will sanctify my name. They will sanctify the Holy One of Jacob and will stand in awe of the God of Israel. And those who err in spirit will come to understanding and those who grumble will accept instruction. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. As Jesus went from his own village, two men who were blind followed him, crying loudly, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he entered the house, the two men who were blind came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes and said, According to your faith, let it be done to you. And their eyes were opened. Then Jesus sternly ordered them, See that no one knows of this. But they went away and spread the news about him throughout that district. The Gospel of the Lord. There was chaos in the basilica. Voices were raised. People were debating. They were shouting at each other. Who can, who would be the successor? The year was 374. The place was Milan. The occasion, the bishop had just died in office. And in the middle of all that noise in the basilica, a young man strode into the basilica. He was the prefect, or what we would call the mayor of the city. And in a little while, he managed to get calm among everybody. And he asked, what is this all about? And somebody cried, Ambrose for bishop. And next thing, the whole church erupted, Ambrose for bishop. And all those who were in line and were hoping to become bishops gradually faded into the background. Ambrose was thoroughly dumbfounded. He was a layman. He was not a priest. He was not even a bishop. For goodness sake, he was not even baptized. So he took to his heels and ran. And the crowd followed him. And when they caught up with him, they persuaded him, first to be baptized, then to be ordained a priest, then to be consecrated or ordained a bishop. And Ambrose made and became a wonderful bishop. I told this this story to our grade 8 students, and they said to me immediately, and they know how to put you on the spot, Father, why didn't we choose bishops and parish priests like that today? Uh, I knew the answer, but how would I explain it to them about hierarchy in words that would not shock? I still am trying to find out words that won't shock or scandalize them. Ambrose did become a wonderful bishop. He gradually became a wonderful preacher, and people would come from all over Milan and Italy to listen to him. One of his great converts, or at least he said the turning point in his life was listening to St. Ambrose preaching, was the great St. Augustine, whose mother was St. Monica. Ambrose was not only a brilliant administrator and a bishop, but he was also a politician, and that was not surprising. His father was the prefect of France, of Britain, of Spain, and certain parts of northern Africa. And when Emperor Theodosius began to persecute and torture people, Ambrose confronted him. Not only did he tell him to stop persecuting and torturing people, he asked him to repent. The Spirit of the Lord must have been on St. Ambrose because Emperor Theodosius obeyed him not only listened, but obeyed him. That same spirit is the spirit that we hear in our first reading today from chapter 29 in Isaiah. The same political stance. The scoffers will cease to be. The tyrants will be put out. The evildoers will be cut off. This is a new world, a new creation. I'm going to create something new, says the Lord through Isaiah. What is something new? The the blind will be able to see, the lame will be able to walk, and those who are merciful and meek will have joy filled in their hearts. You hear the same story in in six chapters later in the 35th chapter of Isaiah in a more poetic form, and that is the way that Jesus used to describe himself. Jesus was preaching, and John the Baptist, who was in prison at that time, sent some of his disciples to Jesus to ask, Are you the Messiah, or do we have to wait for somebody else? 
Why did John doubt? John doubted because he thought the Messiah would come to preach fire and brimstone to send the wicked into hell to Gehenna and to reward those who did good. John the Baptist himself preached in that way. He spoke to the people, he spoke to the soldiers, he spoke to the scribes and Pharisees, he called them hypocrites. And he expected the Messiah to do the same. Jesus did not. Jesus spoke about a God of mercy and compassion. Jesus spoke about the good Samaritan, the prodigal father, the prodigal son. He spoke about sinners were most welcome. Message that are full of joy and peace and happiness. He said, blessed are the poor, which was totally contrary to the Jewish way of thinking. Poverty was a curse and a punishment for the sins that you committed. And Jesus was saying, divest yourselves of all the riches. And so John the Baptist said, are you Jesus Christ? Are you the Messiah we are waiting for? And our gospel picks up the same theme. The blind men who came and said, Jesus, son of David, giving them a title that was a messianic title. The scribes and the Pharisees did not see that, but the blind men could see it. As we come into this Advent and Christmas season, we get caught up in a lot of things. We get caught up with people saying happy holidays instead of happy Christmas. We get caught up in I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus and all these other things, and we fight against them, and we want to put Christ back into Christmas. There was a lady who found that when she was putting a Christmas crib together, found that the baby Jesus had been damaged, so she phoned in, and they said, we will send you by UPS another statue of baby Jesus. And she was making eggnog and all this when the UPS came. And she told her little son, put baby Jesus in the corner. After I finish my eggnog, I'll deal with him. That was only a statue. But how often we do that? Put Jesus in the corner and after we attended everything. It's up to me to put Christ in Christmas, not ask other people to do it. Take time to be quiet. O come divine Messiah, the world in silence waits the day. St. Ambrose, pray for us. Join me now as we pray together. For the Church, as it never ceases to care for the poor and the hungry, we pray to the Lord. For world leaders, as they work for peace and justice for all people, we pray to the Lord. For those who have died during the night, may they rest in peace. For our sponsors today and for their intentions, we pray to the Lord. For an increase of vocations to priestly and religious life, we pray to the Lord. God of life, hear the prayers that we make for the people of this world today. Help those whose faith is lacking and be generous in your love for us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread that we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. My sisters, my brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we celebrate the divine mysteries, O Lord, we pray, 
May the Holy Spirit fill us with that light of faith by which he constantly enlightened St. Ambrose for the spreading of your glory. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. For on the festival of St. Ambrose, you bid your church rejoice. So do you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by, her, by his words of preaching, and keep us safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave the gift. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Benedict, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, the bishops across Canada, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine instruction, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gra graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with one another a sign of this peace and friendship. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us and all our dear ones unto life everlasting. Let us pray. Lead us who have been strengthened by the power of the sacrament, O Lord, to profit from the teaching of St. Ambrose through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been celebrated. Go in peace. Our thanks to two donors. The first are Mr. and Mrs. Norm Liebert from Cloyne, Ontario. The second, an anonymous donor from Edmonton, Alberta. And it's their generous contributions that made the televising of today's Mass possible. If you'd like to sponsor a Mass or share in sponsoring a Mass, please call our office at one 383 for details. The televised daily mass is fast approaching its 16th year, and from day one there has never been the slightest doubt about its spiritual value for all of us and how grateful you are for having it in your homes each day. In 2013, the younger sister of the daily mass, the annual national mission, will celebrate its 13th year of broadcast. Like the Mass, it is seen in Ireland, England, and Australia, thanks to YouTube. And in distant lands like Saudi Arabia, the Philippines, and even in the jungles of the Amazon River, where I saw it personally. In January, we will begin the production of Mission 2013, 
for broadcast on Monday and Tuesday of Holy Week. But first, we urgently need your help to pay for it. Please give what you can. Thank you, and God bless.